Congress. Chairman, make a motion to exit executive session at this time and resume regular session. Second motion. Commissioner Hanson? Yes. Commissioner Luis Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Pete Yes. Uh, 
Uh, this was moved up towards the corner area. Uh, and the Planning Commission did recommend approval of that. Uh, Mr. Trotmeter is one of the Planning Commission members. He would also be, the only thing he would recommend it was that uh, he asked if the, if the cemetery is going to be fenced, which I did say yes, and uh, as far as maintaining and I told him to bring you know, the minimum and not the thing. And he just requested that have the board consider uh, doing some maintenance on it for times of year, just out of respect for the deceased. If somebody wants to go out there, so uh, I told him to bring that to the board. Thank you so much. So the sort of one of the questions I have, and thank you for the information they submitted to the board. Uh, it is on a corner of the property. How far is the uh, the, uh, the the proximity to a county road? It will it will be on the corner of County Road 48 and County Road 105. Thank you. I saw that and I just wanted that for the record that there is not going to be a disturbance of creating in a sense a new road. And the uh, the noxious weed program that we have within the county since this is not going to be part of the responsibility of the county it will also be applicable to this piece of property yeah and it, it will and it's in that area that's the one uh, an area we've been fighting the african route in that area there's so also some uh, russian avenue in that area so uh, we'll probably need to uh, take a look at it every year monitor you know, it being spread. Well, uh, one last question I have, uh, and first of all, thank you for all the work, and this is uh, one of those things that we need on um, behalf of uh, the county to have uh, uh, to extend those services to individuals that uh, do not have any significant others to care for them in very high stages, and so that would be a place of rest for them. So thank you for that. But my question related to that, uh, the uh, fencing, do we have any plan to when that's going to happen? Because I would imagine that we have to fix it before we begin the usage of the same. Yeah, I guess that would be up to I guess the local village once the purchase of the property or whatever that could be. Uh, and then I think that the uh, survey is very important marker. Questions for Mr. Thurman Camp. Uh, would you uh, please raise your right hand, Mr. Thurman Camp? So, hey, Thurman, no secret drink. Just when you ask me, please, you can hold your hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thurman Camp. Yes, so, you know, for the purpose of my only question, following up uh, with uh, the question I have for Mr. Lucero, the fencing, and uh, also, I would, I would, and I don't know what you will think, but then you know, I'll, I'll uh, yield to my fellow commissioners. But I think a gate would be also uh, not necessarily to keep a lock, but to keep any uh, any uh, stock from going in there, any 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 kind of a damage to the property, so we can preserve the integrity and dignity of that place. My thoughts are that once the property is transferred, however that transfer takes place, and we then fix it, and we will have a gate. Access in the road, probably off of 105. It's a bit of a less traffic than 148. And, and also, my thoughts are the minimal disturbance at that location so that nauseous screens, etc., shouldn't be too much of a uh, problem for us. Again, my thoughts are just lay out a flat on how we want to proceed with the variables, etc. Access the access is from the sides, and then from that, there's a minimal disturbance to the I had an opportunity to visit with our county partner and uh, inform them of, of uh, this uh, document coming before us today, and so I think he's certainly one of the individuals that's going to be requesting uh, help from this particular perspective. So, thank you so much, commissioners. Any questions for? Would a bottle water fence be sufficient or will we have to put chain link?
been putting us just thoughts uh, for the vehicles that we need to access that make sure that we have a turnout um, for accessibility for the, whether it be the funeral home uh, or the coroner's office you know, to access to enter and exit the That's a good point. We may have to recess the gate back into the property schools. Any, any other questions? It's a long time coming to see this come to fruition and maybe it's going to be a hard work. Um, if you would like to speak, Kevin, if you signed up. Um, I, for the public hearing, I didn't know I needed to sign for the public. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Murphy, at this time, uh, about the testimony you are about to give will be uh, under sworn testimonies. Please raise your right hand. Okay, Chairman, if you have any previous testimony, you have to be the truth of the law in the middle of the action. Thank you. Thomas Joseph. Just a question in, in reading this it says a pauper cemetery is utilized. Maybe it's just the word you hear as a common grave for the burial of an unclaimed indigent. So maybe they're referring. Word-wise, this is cemetery is being kind of great, but there's been an issue recently. Each individual is going to have a separate grave. Because the way I'm reading it, it's one one mass grave. No, and the property. Thank you so much for that question. The property is five acres, uh, with uh, with basically given that uh, dignity to have their very own space. So, and of course, as we have done with the common, I understand would be. That the county is going to be digging up those graves in a very, very orderly fashion. But yeah, it's not going to be a massive one, and Mr. Murphy, it'll be a individual. So, with my experience in this too, I would urge the county at this time um, to establish through the coroner's office um, when there are bodies that are unknown and unclaimed to, to take DNA uh, ahead of time uh, and, and keep a record of that somewhere. So that they don't have to exhume the body and, and then and then do DNA again, which has happened. So um, you might want to put that procedure in place. And in your expertise, is that not a state statute now? I thought I know it is. It's, we'll, we'll double check and make sure we want to know if I or this particular case. I, I had a case years ago where we buried someone for the coroner's office and with John Smith. And then and we put them in place in the county dip grave and put the plastic down just in case we would we put the person back up. Um, I was contacted 10, 11 months later by by family saying that it was their relative and in the end they didn't consume the body and, and, and take it back. But um, there should be a procedure in place, you know, that, that we're not putting people on the ground without having to zoom them again to get DNA because with the, the science and everything that we have, it's more than likely that in time we're going to find out who they are. That should probably be confirmed out of the county. I'm um, saying to the coroner that if we're going to do this, we're going to have procedures in place that you are going to maintain you know, however that is done you know, so that people you know, find their loved ones because people are searching. There's a website out there where people can search for Thank you for being here for your insight. That's great information. Yes, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions for any one of the individuals that has testified in front of us today? Otherwise, I will entertain a motion. Second. Commissioner Luis Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes, and once again, as uh, has been said so many times, thank you for all the hard work, uh, uh, Mr. Burlington, and all of you that are involved in this process. So at this time, we are now closing this public hearing. And I will entertain a motion to enter into now the uh, regular work on the commissioners meeting to finish our hearing. So moved. Second. Commissioner Bass? Yes. Mr. Luis Lopez? Yes. Mr. Luis Lopez? 
Yes. Thank you, Mr. Reserve. 9B, consideration of county court judge bench order number one. Mr. Darlington. Commissioners, before you your consideration, it is quite a few county court judges bench and placement chain order number one. This came about the deadline, the original deadline in our RFQ for uh, a consultant, our architectural firm consultant, on uh, September 15th. It, it's been a process with working with the state judicial folks to try and come up with what would be a reasonable remodel of that county court um, judges bench and all the ancillary things and it's it's gone on longer than what we anticipated. Uh, decisions frankly weren't made, final decisions weren't frankly made for our grant application that uh, the finance director probably just submitted until one day or two days before the deadline. So I'd ask the board to approve this change order to extend this deadline to November. Um, we've already got the S again from the, uh, the architect, which is what we needed by September 15th. And we'll now approve, you know, we work on the plans once the uh, once we find out they're not going to work the grant to uh, proceed with the uh, remodel of the county court. And, and thank you. I see there's not going to be any adjustment to the uh, contracted initial price, which is good. Um, we're just extending the, uh, the uh, deadline. And he did approach me prior to the being the uh, owner of Alpha Design and the architectural firm engaged with, he did approach me prior to the September 15th uh, and they were in the office so I extended that. So I have something to do that in consideration. So that's the design and who's going to do the build? Pardon me? That's the design and build? He has offered to assist us with the build, but his contract is for the design only at this point. Do you have any contractors uh, ready to go for the build? We have to receive funding first. Frankly, we need to make the state be sure that what their last proposal is what they want to go with. Okay. It has been a, it's been a ping pong contest back and forth as to what they want to you know about. And I think we've got it right now. So we'll get that in place first, and then we'll get the design done, and the bid documents done, and then we'll get it I wrote myself a question here just to be a little facetious. Can this be built away and transported back in the same place, or is it going to have to be built on site? It'll have to be built on site for the most part because we've got to make it ADA compliant. So the bits will have to be built and then the ramps up to the bits and everything else will have to be built. Which then follows to my next question if that happens to be built on site, are we going to be uh, putting the courts into uh, canceling some of their or do we have any space for company or the construction is going on? Mr. Kreiman, the uh, court administrator has some ideas on how to uh, accommodate the county court in their remodels and uh, I think there's a big room back at the DA's area that he thought he could use and also the district court, the district court also could use, but I don't want to speak for him, but he's already Hold that over so that's in the notes. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any other questions on that? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve consideration of county court judges bench change order number one. Second motion. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Luis Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Peters Lopez? Yes. Nine C consideration of diesel fuel pay is in order again. Commissioner, before you for your consideration is the delivery of Diesel fuel to our fairgrounds facility. The following results 7,200 gallons, excuse me, approximately 7,200 gallons of diesel in the red right there. Real fuel, um, the dye is 3.7112, acorn petroleum 3.66256 per gallon, Mana value 3.65. Per gallon universal a little bit, lost a little bit. 
I'd ask the board to approve the Hunter Valley to bid at three point six five dollars per gallon for an extended price of twenty six thousand two hundred eighty dollars. Sir, comments, questions. Otherwise, I'll make your motion. Move to approve the least fuel bid and award it to the Hunter Valley Oil for a total of twenty six thousand three hundred seventy. No, twenty six thousand two hundred eighty. Second motion. Mr. Lee Slope? Yes. Mr. Hatch? Yes. Mr. Peter Slope? Yes. 9D, consideration of a leaded fuel bill, Mr. Perlican. We should also, uh, since the bids for the delivery of the project 8,000 gallons of unleaded, we have some into our programs facility with the following results. Coral fuel, 2.9, U6 dollars for. Three, excuse me, two point one through six eight dollars per gallon. Acorn Petroleum two point eight six zero four five dollars per gallon. Mana Valley two point nine two dollars per gallon. Let's work to prove Acorn Petroleum's bid of two point eight six zero four five dollars per gallon. The same price twenty two thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars sixty six. Thank you, sir. Uh, questions? Otherwise. Motion to approve the unleaded fuel bid to eight for petroleum, extended price twenty two thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars sixty cents. Second motion. Commissioner Hatch? Yes. Commissioner Lee Slobet? Yes. Commissioner Beach? Yes. Uh, we come to a very exciting portion of this meeting. Uh, presentation of 2024 uh, proposed budgets for fiscal year 24. So, uh, Finance Director uh, Coberly, thank you for all the work that you did. Is uh, uh, putting two proposals together. Uh, thank you for all the work and uh, the information that we have in front of us. So, Elevator. We need to be moving up there. 
your elevator. Um, we like to get sliding doors for the front of the building. Um, the courtyard, we have to do some improvements for ADA compliance. Um, the scenic highway of legends, we did actually budget for that. The zero scaping for the courthouse, that's included in the capital expenditure. Um, second floor, you know, we'd like to maybe each year maybe work on one or two offices on improving the carpet, painting, and improving each office. So right now I think we actually have to go one or two offices this year to improve that. And then the capital center will transfer uh, FAE to cover the airport. That's what's included in this. Fields, since we receive additional funds, we are going to transfer um, money from PIP to general fund to help cover the HVAC. Transfer to capital expansion for the courthouse projects. Transfer to the airport for the set to take the title and the others for those projects. And then we transfer a million dollars to, to women that we normally do to help on these roads and the system. So, did I miss anything that you reviewed in each of these budgets that you wanted to discuss? I, I didn't see, I mean, Chairman, uh, the treasurer's office needing any additional staffing at this point. With Changes coming if it passes, has that been discussed? She, when she came before us before budget, she would ask for one or two employees. But after speaking to Jody, Jody did want to call them together. But I didn't know, like I said, that's why I gave Jody. So it would be the part time. Okay. The part time, just in case I'm saying, not because of HX, but I think the treasurer was asking for another employee. I thought Jody could be in charge of an employee if actually the employee said employee came into the treasurer's. During the treasurer's busy time. So I, I thought that was the best. If you think there was another option, uh, as I long as our elected officials were okay with that. And, and we really can't afford a full FTE, right. especially I, with the decline of $97,000. So, right. uh, yes, what, whatever decline on uh, property taxes. I can talk to both, both elected officials and you know, see that she gave the question, the treasurer gave the question one or two employees. Well, I think we have time to, before we finalize our budgets in December, mm -hmm. and we'll see if the election brings us at that time. This is just a suggestion. Yeah. Just trying to put it out because we still need to um, negotiate with the union. And we're not going to have a lot of
appreciate it here. We appreciate every single year. Right. $320,000 that becomes a real liability. And it's probably a little bit more that's just what I'm saying, which is hands-on, fully purchased that year. So, like, the main kind of improvement that becomes from going to the airport. Mm -hmm. So, that increase that. Right now, that's what the airport has is uh, assets. And on the side note, we do have an RMQ on the operator on at the airport. I think it's due to third, I believe, something like that. So, let's see if we get anybody that might be interested in Manager for lack of a better way than that perfectly. And we need to get back and uh, continue to entertain the, uh, the possibility of uh, the industrial park to vendors. If we were at the capacity to do that, we would need to bring a little bit of revenue because, you know, even the depreciation expenses are real expensive for the company. We were basically throwing new money after nothing. Right. It has to be one last question. On the, I know there's still negotiations to work with the union and, uh, and salary and stuff. Has that been addressed um, across the board, county increases for inflation at this time? Or we, I'm, I'm working on a spreadsheet to present to commissioners so we can see what, um, what we can afford on budget. So I'll have that done just so we can actually send it and then we can um, set up a, a meeting with negotiations once, once I have that. Sounds great. Right. Thank you. I may on the not to speed program when you build an inspector. Do uh, you have that with him? So I don't see a. That's in Northern Bridge. Because I think Northern Bridge has an option. Statutory, and I can't remember what statute it is, but statutory, the Road Bridge Department of Public Works Department, I think that's actually stated in the statute, is required to have X amount of dollars for the not to speed program. And we've actually increased that from 15 to 20. We're asking to go to 20 in 2024 to offset some of the spraying and also reducing our contract with spraying that we did in the past. That was going to be my other question. Thank you. So, just holding the pattern and wait until I see what the dollar brings us. Right, yeah, this, I'm, I'm sure this budget will change. This Thank you. Once we have the final figures, we know exactly. Thank you for uh, all the work uh, and the work and I think uh, You can see where DHS is still awarded the two mills for, for both budgets. Just to kind of extend the DHS, you know. That, that's a great point. Yeah. This is a good reason. So, uh, we need a uh, motion to approve the uh, proposed budgets. It's just a presentation. Thank you. As long as I present it before the 15th. Let's go to 9F. Consideration of San Carlos letter of support, uh, Mr. Turnkamp. Commission 43 consideration is for approval of uh, uh, San Carlos letter of support. This is for the San Carlos Ranger District's non motorized trail crew 2023 grant application. I will entertain a motion for this item. Move for approval of the liquor license renewal for the Second. 
Mr. Luis Lopez? Yes. Mr. Mass? Yes. Mr. Felix Lopez? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Great to see you. Uh, 9A, to consideration of scared broadband measure support, Mr. Norcan. Mr. McCoy, for your consideration is a measure support for skids, broadband, grant application, and also they also work hand in hand with CECOM uh, to try to do some high speed in the rest of I 25. Mr. Norcan. Yes. 